Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Tom Bosa here at the Department of Food Technology and Nutrition, Macquarie University. Uh, today we are here to discuss about uh, post-harvest losses in our fresh produce. Post-harvest losses basically refer to uh, degradation of, uh, of, of, of produce, of food, of uh, fresh produce uh, that lead to qualitative and quantitative uh, losses. And this uh, happens right from when the, uh, the produce is still in the garden up to the time this food is available on the table to be consumed by the, to be consumed, uh, by the consumer. So along the value chain, from the field to the plate, there are losses. Now, the qualitative losses refer to the nutritive uh, losses, the losses in sensory appeal, and, and, and loss of edibility of this uh, produce. So this uh, kind of uh, uh, loss implies that uh, the, the, the produce is less nutritious and less appealing to the consumer and therefore it is a loss. Then the quantitative losses refers to uh, loss in amount, loss in amount available for consumption, the physical amount. Um, uh, for example, uh, during transportation, for example, uh, some of the, f uh, the, the food uh, drops alongside the road, and that will lead to a reduction in amount that is available to be consumed. That is a quantitative uh, kind of loss. Now, these losses are caused by many factors along the value chain, but I will, sub I will summarize these into uh, four. One, I mean, one, one cause of these losses is the biological factors. The biological factors refer to, uh, uh, ref refer to physiological uh, processes that happen within these uh, fresh produce because these are living things and therefore they have normal physiological processes that happen even after the, the, the plant has been harvested uh, from the garden. Then you have biological agents uh, such as rodents and insects. Uh, these also uh, cause uh, both quantitative and qualitative losses, as we shall see. Uh, the other main cause, major cause of loss are, are chemical uh, contamination, uh, chemical residues. Uh, during uh, field practices, Sometimes farmers apply these chemicals at wrong times, they harvest at wrong times, and you find some produce phys is physically looking contaminated with chemical, it has physical, uh, their physical, uh, there's physical appearance of chemical residues. I've seen this, for example, in tomatoes. Okay? This leads to qua uh, qualitative losses for people who are health sensitive. Once they see uh, those traces of uh, chemical residues, they will not buy these tomatoes, and that in itself is a loss. Then we have uh, uh, physical uh, losses, uh, physical causes of loss, uh, and this could be as a result of mechanical damage, uh, impact, uh, impact damage or injury along uh, the value chain, uh, right from the garden uh, to the plate. Uh, next we have... Um, environmental related uh, causes of post-harvest loss. For example, due to, due to exposure yeah. to too much sunshine or too much rain, uh, some of these could lead to both qualitative and quantitative losses. Um, next we have uh, the, 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 we have the cultural practices, uh, losses that happen due to cultural practices. Cultural practices are basically field practices. Um, this may include things like um, harvesting at the wrong stage. Some farmers harvest their produce before it is ready, uh, before it is physiologically mature. This in itself predisposes this kind of produce to uh, post-harvest losses. This produce becomes more prone to post-harvest losses, qualitative and quantitative 
uh, losses. Produce harvested when immature in price that it hasn't yet, for example, accumulated uh, uh, its potential in terms of nutrients, and therefore you've lost qualitatively as well. So in summary, those are the main causes of post-harvest losses. And next we are going to be looking, we are going to be demonstrating, uh, showing you that defects, the, the, the several, uh, the, the different defects in our fresh produce and vegetables that happen as a result of those uh, mentioned uh, uh, causes of post-harvest losses. And now we are going to look at the different uh, uh, defects in our f uh, fresh produce. Uh, all these items were bought from one of our uh, fresh produce, our local fresh produce market. We have oranges here. Uh, so for oranges, if you look at this particular one, for example, by just pressing, you see how it looks. This is a, a soft rot that most likely happened uh, at the stall. This is normally caused by uh, uh, bacteria. It's a biological kind of uh, 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 cause. Uh, bacteria is the bac kind of bacteria that causes this uh, is normally the Awinia uh, species of bacteria. Uh, of course, you, this is already a loss in terms of both nutrients because these bacteria feed on nutrients in this kind of fruit. So you, you're losing qualitatively uh, in terms of nutrients. In terms of appearance, nobody will be willing to, uh, to eat this kind of uh, uh, fruit, so it has lost edibility. Um, uh, also in terms of safety, we're not sure how safe uh, this kind of uh, fruit is. Um, then of course in terms of quantity, because this will be just be thrown away, so we are losing uh, everything. Uh, then we have uh, some which look like this. If you look at this kind of uh, orange, it has these brown uh, spots everywhere, uh, which are definitely not desirable uh, to the eye. This most likely happened in the garden, in the field. It is a pre-harvest uh, kind of um, a cause of loss. Uh, this is most likely a fungal infection, because this is actually anthracnose. These are anthracnose spots. Anthracnose is a fungal disease. Then I have also seen some bruises. This is a bruise, which you see here. It's a bruise. Uh, this could have happened during uh, transportation because um, uh, they kind of sometimes just throw these on the vehicle. Uh, sometimes when they are pack packaged together in that uh, as, a, as a lot in the sack, they squeeze against each other, they rub against each other, uh, creating these bruises. Now these bruises, uh, as innocent as it looks to the eye, uh, it has serious implications um, because a bruise exposes your fruit to, uh, uh, to contamination, to microbial contamination. So if you look at these uh, major these causes of post-harvest loss, some of them, one, some of them, one of them leads to the other, okay? They, 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 they don't, uh, they, they, they work together to bring about losses. A mechanical damage will lead to exposure to microbial uh, contamination, which will lead to uh, rotting, and then therefore you're losing that fruit, okay? So bruises pre-expose your fruit to microbial contamination. Not only that, a bruised fruit uh, loses moisture more than a fruit that is whose external skin is wholesome, okay? For example, this one is not bruised. So this will lose more moisture as compared to this one. Um, in terms of the physiological uh, 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 agents, for example, respiration, uh, again, a bruised fruit, a fruit that has got any mechanical kind of mechanical damage, uh, the rate of respiration, for example, increases, and this leads to 
uh, more moisture losses and more nutrient losses due to uh, uh, breakdown. Um, I, I also see uh, when it comes to lemon, these lemons are vividly uh, wilted. Uh, this is uh, wilting. They are vividly. I know that the surface of lemon is normally rough, but for some of them, you can see that it is not just the natural surface. For example, this one looks wilted from up here. Okay. And if you look at their size, uh, we may argue that it could be a variety issue, but these ones are abnormally small. And even when you cut through, like you see here, if this doesn't look like ripe, like uh, mature uh, lemon. Okay? This looks young. So this is premature harvest which is also a cause, a post-harvest, uh, which also leads to post-harvest uh, losses because these haven't yet accumulated the nutrient reserves that we need. So it's, it's a, a, a clearly uh, a qualitative loss. But also, um, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, losses due to evaporation, a fruit that is harvested prematurely um, is more prone to mechanical damage. It is more prone to bruises, okay? And these bruises, therefore, bring about those other uh, uh, agents I've talked about, the evaporation, uh, more respiration, and therefore, more losses. Oranges no, uh, and, and lemon, uh, basically citrus fruits, also normally get some, apart from the anthracnose, uh, uh, Anthracnose disease, which is fungal. There's also white, uh, this white form of fungi. It is also common in these fruits and vegetables. And once conditions, once storage conditions are ideal, you see this uh, are ideal for growth of these uh, molds. You see this happening. Uh, yeah, so those are the main uh, uh, causes of loss when it comes to the citrus fruits, the ones we can see here. Then, um, uh, for passion fruits, again, I'm seeing a lot of wilting. These ones, passion fruits, doesn't look like this, but this is clearly uh, wilted. Uh, we talked about the impact of wilting. Uh, this is uh, intentional mechanical damage. Normally, these traders want to show potential customers uh, what they have to attract them to buy. And this definitely causes contamination and therefore, mo and also moisture uh, loss. Then you have uh, uh, this. If you look at the shape, it is not round. This is flat. So this is basically as a result of uh, compression, uh, compression damage. It's a kind of physical damage. Probably in, in the sack, wherever they were, they were squeezing against each other, compacting each other, leading to breakage. And uh, definitely this exposed this particular fruit to microbial contamination. Clearly there are some molds, uh, they even have black spores, they are starting to grow. And this particular one, uh, this one has molds already, white uh, mold. Um, talking about the impact of wilting, I've already talk, said that yeah, uh, the impact of uh, yeah, wilting, I've already said you lose uh, more moisture. Now, our, our traders in Uganda uh, have a tendency of thinking that these wilted passion fruits, they yield more juice. Because when you cut through it, uh, when you cut through it, the seeds, uh, the, the seeds are detached from the placenta. Okay? And this detachment was caused as a result of retraction. Retraction due to moisture loss. So it is not that they have a lot of juice, but because of that kind of orientation, the disorganization as a result of retraction of the seeds, the, the saturated parts from the placenta. If you compare this with a, a fresh passion fruit, one that hasn't lost any moisture, you see the attachment. I think this is more clear. You, you see those attachments. The seeds are attached uh, uh, attached uh, correctly. 
Okay? So, this, it is wrong to assume that this yields more juice. It is not correct. It is just, as was, it is just the appearance that deceives uh, these uh, uh, people. Then you have uh, some which are wooden. I cut through this. I struggled to cut this. Uh, if I try to cut the second time, you can see it is a, it is a pain to cut through this. Hmm? It's not easy to cut through this because it is wooden. Now, this woodiness uh, happens in the garden um, as a result of uh, some pre-harvest factors in the garden. They could be um, uh, weather conditions. And uh, such woody passion fruits also don't develop well inside. You see, it almost the seeds didn't develop well. It has, you cannot squeeze any juice from this. So this is basically a loss. Um, so those are the main uh, uh, losses we can see here for passion uh, uh, fruits. Uh, so those are the main ones for passion fruits. Uh, now we... Now let's talk about this. Let's look at the apples. Um, look at my apples here. Uh, they have these uh, discolorations, these soft, these discolorations. They are also soft spots. Um, this normally happens due to cold storage. Uh, uh, they were stored at low temperatures, but probably not the right temperature. And you see, each of these fruits, they have got uh, optimal temperatures at which they are supposed to be stored. Okay, so this is mainly a storage, a cold storage problem, uh, a refrigerator kind of damage. Uh, so normally, when they thaw, that is when you see. Uh, these beatings happening when you squeeze. Actually, if you cut through uh, a pineapple that has got uh, either fridge, freezer, or refrigerator uh, cooling damage, uh, cold storage damage, you see the color inside, the color of the, um, uh, uh, the color of the saturated part. Okay, it has turned uh, uh, brownish. Okay, uh, this doesn't look good. Uh, so you're losing in terms of quality uh, because uh, apples are not supposed to look like that. So basically, most of these apples, that is the main uh, challenge. This particular one was cut. It has a cut here. And uh, you, I, there are some molds starting to grow. So they are small. You don't know, see them. It has actually two cuts. Uh, this could have happened probably uh, during harvesting, uh, uh, leading to this kind of mechanical uh, damage. This pre-exposes uh, your, uh, your fruit to both moisture loss um, uh, and, and microbial contamination. So those are the main uh, defects I can see for the apples we have here. Then uh, we have our mangoes. Uh, for mangoes, you see, look at this, the color of the mango. Uh, these the brown spots, uh, the anthracnose uh, spots due to anthracnose. It's a pre-harvest uh, problem. We already saw this in uh, oranges and uh, basically citrus fruits. Then uh, there is this rot. This came as a result of, you see this skin is broken here. So it could have been either it was pierced or cut accidentally and led to some rotting here. Uh, so on exposure, there was contamination by microorganisms, especially uh, this looks like a fungal kind of rot. Um, now um, we also have, uh, I've cut through this. Um, this is now, normally when, when a fruit is intact, when there is no damage, external damage, we expect that this fruit has nothing. It has no microorganisms. It has, doesn't have any macroorganism inside. Okay? It is expected to be sterile. 
in short because they normally have this 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 thick skin which protects them from entry of micro uh, organisms and larvae uh, and, 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 and other uh, macro organisms okay however if open this one it already has it is already rotten inside and it has maggots there is a maggot there are maggots moving okay now what causes this because uh, even these other organisms um, uh, these maggots are norm normally come from fruit flies fruit flies are a big problem in the field especially for mangoes and um, uh, even even oranges um, uh, they normally have this problem of fruit flies now uh, because these insects the level the level stage is one of the adaptive one of the it is the stage which uh, enables the insect to adapt to different environments when insects lay their eggs on this hard coating of the fruit and the legs the legs the eggs will hatch into the larvae but these larvae are adapted to secrete they secrete uh, tough enzymes which are able to which are able to digest uh, uh, the skin this thick skin of the mango and they find themselves in the fruit and when they're in the fruit they are causing all this they are they are causing the rotting they are we are losing in terms of quality quantity we are losing in terms of nutrients because they are feeding on nutrients in this fruit nobody is going to eat this because it doesn't look good nobody wants to eat a fruit that has maggots moving so that is uh, both quantitative and qualitative uh, kind of loss so this is definitely a biological cause of, of post harvest loss so i think uh, that's it for the mangoes uh, this one has no maggots i guess it looks good as compared to what i just uh, displayed um if look at our mangoes i think they were all harvested at the right stage um now let's look at the yellow bananas we have these common uh, bananas. We expect them to be re to be yellow yeah, when they ripe. We don't expect these uh, uh, dark spots here. These are clearly bruises. Okay, these are clearly bruises due to uh, mechanic due to handling. Okay, uh, as uh, in the markets or even uh, during harvesting. Okay, so uh, we've I've already uh, talked about. Uh, the impact of these bruises when it comes to post harvest losses um, now this particular one is rotting but I also see some fungal growth on the surface okay if you look at most of these they actually overripe okay some of them are overripe um i already told you that among the post harvest the causes of post harvest losses the biological factors we have the physiological factors um, and one of the physical factors i think i haven't talked about is ripening i've been talking about respiration ripening is one of the natural the physiological factors that continue to happen uh, even after the fruit is harvested uh, uh these the ba bananas um Bananas are, uh, are climacteric fruits. Okay, they produce ethylene. Okay, they, pro they they produce a lot of ethylene. Ethylene is one of the growth factors that facilitates ripening. Now, the bruising also increases the rate of ethylene production. Okay, which increases the ripening. Okay, so you have them uh, becoming overripe due to the bruises. Okay, the bruises also expose uh, the fruit to uh, bacterial fungal infection, and that is what explains uh, this kind of rotting begun from the surface due to uh, uh, bruises. Um, so I think that is it for these apple bananas. We have uh, what we normally call gonja. This is the type of banana that is normally eaten roasted on the roadsides 
Um, this type of banana is actually sold expensively in the market because of the commercial uh, attachments. Like, for example, these fingers were bought at, were bought at 5,000. The way it looks like this, okay? They bought at 5,000. And most of them are bruised. Now, the other challenge with bruising is that it also, um, it also exposes, uh, exposes enzymes, okay? There are certain enzymes, which they are naturally occurring enzymes uh, in these fresh fruits and, 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 and vegetables. And one of such natural occurring organ enzymes is uh, are oxidizing en enzymes, for example, the polyphenol oxidase. So when a fruit is bruised, you're going to see, to see browning taking place. You're exposing uh, the enzymes, the juices. Um, you're exposing the enzymes and the nutrients. At the same time, you also... Um, uh, so when the enzymes mix with the, 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 uh, the juices from the fruit or the nutrients, there's going to be some uh, oxidation, okay? So you, there will be a bit of nutrient loss, but you'll also have uh, qualitative losses in terms of appearance. This dark skin thing does, definitely doesn't look good, okay? Um, other things I've talked about them, in terms of moisture loss, in terms of... Um, uh, physiological changes that happen due to uh, mechanical damage. So basically, uh, those are the main issues with our uh, bananas. So now, uh, next we are going to look at this uh, pineapple here. This uh, popo, not pineapple. Uh, if you look at this, we expect that when a pineapple is ripe, we expect at least to it to be yellow. So at least at the base. This makes me think that this was harvested prematurely and it had to just ripe. This was, this was basically forced ripening. Uh, there are so many there were so many bruises which of course led to uh, contamination by fungi. You see all these darkish green fungi growing. Uh, okay, so there was a lot of uh, damage, physical damage, which led to contamination. Let me try to cut through and see. Uh, again, when you cut through, this basically confirms that this some of the seeds uh, look immature, actually. Uh, if you look at the color, the color of uh, that edible portion, I expect it to be uh, stronger than it is now, more yellow or orangish. So this was a clear effect of premature harvesting and also bruising. Uh, so in terms of taste, the sensory characteristics, you don't expect this to taste uh, as, as, as good as... Uh, uh, a maturely harvested uh, popo. Uh, also, in terms of appearance, this doesn't look attractive. So we are losing in terms of both nutri nutrients and in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the quality, the quantity. Okay, because this some of these they are, are just going to be cut off and thrown away because it's already rotting because of the fungal infections, the fungal. Uh, infestations. Uh, then uh, we have our pineapples here. This particular one is a good looking pineapple. It doesn't have any of those other defects. Uh, so we have no problem with that one. But this particular one, uh, if you squeeze here, you see this oozing out. And actually it is not because it is overripe. It is basically because of um, impact damage. If you look at this here, it must have been uh, uh, squeezed by other pineapples in storage 
because if you look at this surface here, it is harder than this side. Uh, the same applies here. Okay. So all these expose your fruits to uh, uh, microbial infestation and also other processes, the, 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 the biological processes, the physical, physical processes also uh, have become enhanced due to uh, mechanical damage, as I've already explained for other fruits. Then for the uh, watermelon, I see the main problem here is this crack. See here? Uh, this crack doesn't look like... Um, uh, it, it looks as if it happened... It basically happened in the garden before this watermelon was harvested. Uh, what caused this was mainly pre-harvest factor. This is clearly late harvesting. Uh, it was harvested, uh, late harvesting basically. The time of harvesting wasn't right. Now when these fruits are mature and there's a lot of water in the gardens, you find them uh, breaking apart because of too much water. Okay, so it's basically a pre-harvest uh, factor that led to this. This has potential to lead to uh, moisture loss, microbial contamination, and therefore rotting. Um, then have our jackfruit here. Uh, jackfruit, I see a lot of so many things. The cut you see here was intentional. This was intentionally done. This jackfruit was bought like this. In fact, it was like this with the newspapers in the middle. This is how it was displayed in the market. Okay. Um, so, most, most cases for jackfruit, uh, these traders cut it intentionally. There's also another intentional cut here. Now, here they, they, they normally want to, to establish if the jackfruit is ripe. Okay? They use the wrong uh, uh, maturity indices. Okay? So they normally cut this, cut a hole somewhere. And this exposes it to microbial infestation. You can clearly see it is rotting. Here it is rotten already. Okay? And most likely this jackfruit was harvested premature. Okay? I'm sure you have already talked, looked at uh, maturity indices. You know the different maturity indices for most of these fruits. Um, then, because it was harvested and uh, unripe, normally people out there, they try to cut, sometimes they cut, uh, this was done longitudinally, because they think the cutting helps in, uh, in, in it helps in, uh, it increases, it helps the fruit ripen faster. And they are right, it actually ripens when they cut. But what are the dangers of doing this? Okay. First, they harvested prematurely. They are supposed to harvest a mature jackfruit. If they had harvested it mature, uh, at a mature stage, they, didn't, they wouldn't have had to cut it like this. Now, the dangers of cutting, this intentional cutting, you can see we exposed our jackfruit to microbial inf uh, infestations. This part is basically going to be cut away. People, will, people, are, people normally they eat such things, they cut away this and throw it away. That is a quantitative kind of loss. You're losing in terms of quantity. This is clearly rotting. Okay? These uh, fruits inside here. Hmm? If I press, you can see this is rotten. Okay? This is rotten. And this shows that there has been uh, both bacterial there has been microbial uh, contamination which has led to the rotting all together uh, then uh, if you look at um, uh, of course uh, because this was forced ripening this color the color of of this me cut deep inside I would expect this color to be 
uh, more yellow than it is here. Okay. So basically, in terms of sensory characteristics, uh, we are not attaining the right color. Okay. And uh, for nutritionists, we know what this color implies. This implies that the fruit has more has beta carotene. Okay. It has pro vitamin A. So because of forced ripening, it is not going to accumulate. It is not going to synthesize. Uh, enough vitamin A. So in terms of nutrients, you're really losing. You're going to have little vitamin A in this fruit. Um, in terms of... Um, uh, now, let's look at this, the newspaper that was put on top here. What are the dangers of having this? Uh, this newspaper has writings on it, has ink, you know, would not know the material of this paper. Okay. So there is a likelihood of chemical contamination as a result of this newspaper. We don't know how safe, we don't know how safe this kind of uh, thing is uh, uh, in terms of food safety. Okay. So there is a likelihood of chemical contamination due to this, the migration of ink from the newspaper uh, uh, to, to our food or our jackfruit. Um, so uh, basically, we can see we are losing a lot. We are likely to lose almost 20 percent, or even over 20 percent of this jackfruit because of what happened. Okay? Uh, because we're going to cut off the whole of this. We're going to cut off the whole of this. Uh, this part is beginning to rot, so you cut off that, and then you cut off. This whole part, this whole part is rotten. All this is going to be cut off. So the loss is, the loss is very big. Okay. Um, of course, the enhanced physiological uh, processes due to the physical damage are what led to the first ripening. Okay. When you cut, when you damage the fruit. Um, <coughs> There is increased ethylene production, increased respiration, and that is what caused uh, uh, the softening and the ripening. Okay? Of course, that comes with it uh, 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 senescence coming, uh, coming on faster. So the next here is um, uh, our avocado. Uh, here we have intentional uh, intentional cuts by uh, traders uh, normally just want to show that whether the, that the fruit is looking good inside whatever but this actually is not good because it, it's a kind of mechanical damage and it exposes our fruit to uh, losses in terms of moisture uh, microbial uh, infestation leading to uh, uh, spoilage and rotting then uh, of course, because of the storage issues we have in our markets, uh, these fruits, we have some which, were, which have been eaten. This is, these are teeth, teeth of rats, teeth of rodents. Okay. Uh, I think this is more clear. Yes, this is a, a real rat. Okay. This was eaten by rats. So, uh, However, what most people do is they cut off this and then eat the remaining part. But uh, my friend, I'm not sure whether uh, I'm not sure about the safety of, of of the remaining part when a rat has just fed on this. Okay, and even when you're cutting off this, you, you're losing more. Okay, you're losing more food. The rat ate part of this, so you've lost nutrients. You've lost uh, the, in terms of quantity. Okay. Uh, then um, there are also some impact damages. Uh, this was during harvesting. You see this broke. Okay. So again, you're having more uh, exposures in this case. Uh, then this is also an impact damage during harvesting. Uh, the skin was broken. I think those are the major, major ones for avocado, which potentially, and you already see that we are getting losses. 